to Study Abroad Week. This session is International Internships. Uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, my name is Martha McGivern. I'm going to present some information. We've got some two awesome students that have done uh, different types of internships that are going to share uh, their experiences with you as well. So I already mentioned my name. Um, I'm the Director of Study Abroad. Uh, here at DePaul. Uh, I also work closely with students who do the uh, virtual international internship program that you'll hear about in a moment. And Anastasia and AJ, can I have you to introduce yourselves as well, please? Yes. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Anastasia, and I just completed an international internship in Barcelona this summer. I'll be happy to share some more information later. And as always, reach out to me if you have any questions or at the end of the presentation. Hey, and uh, hey everybody. My name is AJ, uh, fourth year uh, studying econ, just returned from an international internship uh, in London. Um, doing consulting. So uh, here to answer any questions as well. Sorry for the delay there. Um, to get us started, I want to talk about what the objectives are of the session that you're attending. So first, uh, when you finish this session, we'd like you to know that internships are a key feature of some DePaul study abroad programs. Um, we'd like you to understand that international internships are available both virtually, which is important, especially important right now, as well as in person to DePaul students. We want you to connect with your peers, specifically AJ and Anastasia, who participated in an internship focused study abroad program. And we want to make sure you learn how to search for international, opportun international internship opportunities um, through DePaul. Um, when we talk about program models for internships uh, at DePaul, uh, we really offer two main things, and then you can kind of do something on your own. So the first are virtual international internships. Um, and Anastasia is going to talk about her experience with these with this uh, program, but I'll give you a little bit of an introduction. So this is this is an opportunity that really arose out of the pandemic. Um, this is something that DePaul and other schools had kind of thought about a little bit, but not really, you know, done too much about as when it was kind of business at usual. And then last spring, when we needed to cancel um, a number of study abroad programs, our students had a very limited international opportunity suddenly. And a lot of students who, of our students who had summer internships or other work experience lined up for the summer, um, had those uh, experiences unfortunately canceled as well. Um, so we uh, partnered with an organization who we work with on, on a lot of in-person international internship work called CEA Study Abroad. And we rapidly uh, opened this option for our students that we call virtual international internships. Um, we had a group, including Anastasia, in the summer. We have, uh, we have two cohorts uh, over two sessions that will participate this fall. And this is actually something we're planning to offer long-term, even post-pandemic, for our students. So the way that it works is um, you apply to the program, and uh, once accepted, will be matched with a company in one of 10 international cities uh, to do an internship uh, for six weeks. Uh, all, all virtually based from home. Um, you will take a course alongside that internship uh, that counts at DePaul as UIP, University Internship Program 250, uh, and that carries experiential learning credit. The um, the other part of this are, you know, part of kind of associated with this course are also a number of career coaching sessions, you know, as you're kind of developing your career and figuring out. So this is this virtual option that is new, but that we plan to offer long term. Um, second are in-person internships through DePaul Study Abroad programs. And AJ is going to share his experience with you um, doing one of these uh, in London. There are a number of, of DePaul Study Abroad programs where an internship is either the focus of the program or one of the options within the program. And the idea is that you are simultaneously studying abroad and pursuing an internship in a way that perhaps you would do uh, in Chicago. Um, 
in any of these uh, in any of these programs, there are a, a fair range of, of professional and, and academic fields uh, covered by these internships. Similarly, we work with uh, universities and other organizations internationally who have relationships with these companies to help match our, our students. So these are the two really types of models that DePaul Study Abroad offers, and DePaul's an institution offers to our students. And then I just want to say it's possible to do something on your own. So some of our students do have you know a connection overseas and they're able to get their own internship set up um, or you know want to find another kind of program sort of like to Paul offers but they want to do it on their own that's absolutely allowed um, and so I just want to say that and we can you know support you to a, a certain extent with that um, it, it's outside of what we typically offer but we would love you to have an international internship and so however um, whichever the, the model or mode that gets you there would be great for you I'm going to turn over now to Anastasia to please uh, talk a bit about your experience. Uh, thank you so much, Marty. Um, so my internship was with Coasis, which is a hospitality business in Calafel, um, a town located on the Mediterranean Sea, just like one hour outside of Barcelona. It was founded by two female entrepreneurs with passion for hospitality, traveling, new adventures, and it, uh, it offers a modern way of housing uh, for digital nomads who want to discover new places and keep a healthy work-life balance. My role was um, a digital marketing strategist, and I'm doing peer and advertising as my major in college, just as an uh, FYI. Um, and my role was to assist in the development of a cohesive and profitable social media strategy for Quasis. Um, so I performed market research in order to better understand the target audience and the current culture climate. With COVID, it was quite challenging to work in the hospitality, but it even made it more interesting. And with all the data collected, I was able to create and execute um, monthly social media content calendar, as well as create the whole content. Um, and another interesting thing is that I'm an international student myself um, in the studying in the US. So the whole idea and concept of studying abroad or doing an internship abroad is very fascinating because I personally love to challenge my comfort zone um, and to push myself into unknown experiences and unknown cultures. Um, and this summer just felt like the perfect opportunity to do so since we're all stuck uh, into the city where we found ourselves in March, right? Um, what I liked about internship is this internship as well is uh, the collaboration and the courses that was offered through CEA, as Marty explained, um, um, the partner of study abroad. Uh, so weekly we had discussions and courses and um, assignments that made us self-reflect uh, on our career, what we were doing, but also just to discover, they made us discover more about the Spanish culture and the people and their history and heritage, their communication style and so forth. Um, through all of this, I was able to gain um, in-depth knowledge about the people who are living in Spain. And since I took this in the summer, in the midst of a pandemic, I learned how to adjust, how to find creative ways to live in this new normality in my personal life. I had to learn how to adjust the content online as well so I can have effective communications with my target audience. The work was definitely dynamic and things were changing on the daily, but um, it all only made me feel alive. And um, as cliche as it may sound, uh, this I think that this College time is the perfect time to find yourself and find a career path that you love. Um, and the only way to do it is by living your own bubble and exploring the world outside of it. Um, I know that it might be scary, you might be scared, or you might be feeling overwhelmed. But if you are if you're scared to do something, then just do it with fear. I would say uh, because you gain something new every time. Thanks so much for sharing that, that information, Anastasia. That, that's great. Um, we will have uh, a chance to ask some questions um, at the end. So make a note of them or put them in the chat. Um, and uh, in a few more slides, we'll be able to um, ask questions of our panelists. Um, we'd like to turn over now to, um, to our presenter, AJ Rucker. Thanks, Martha. 
Uh, so again, my name is AJ, uh, fourth year studying economics, uh, mathematics. So um, just last year, actually this time last year, I was uh, in the city of London uh, studying at the London South Bank University. And uh, I was completing an internship with a real estate firm uh, called Lovett Parks. Uh, it was founded in 2018, headquartered in London. Uh, it's a UK-based real estate firm with quickly growing portfolio of residential and, and holiday caravan parks uh, spread throughout the United Kingdom. So uh, caravan parks uh, or a caravan park is a very decorated way of saying a trailer park, um, except these were high-end caravans. So um, you found yourself purchasing plots from anywhere from 75,000 to 250,000 pounds, uh, which is more like $300,000. So anyway, while there, I I worked as a strategy consulting uh, autumn analyst, and some of my responsibilities included internal project management, uh, focused on delivering strategic sales and digital marketing process improvements. So uh, two, I think, shining achievements that I I love to, to talk about, um well just bro- more broadly like i it was a smaller company with only about 50 or so employees and so it was a very intimate environment where i really got to learn just an absolute uh load of, of a different information i got to work directly with the ceo and the coo uh, on a bunch of special projects one included uh migrating the company over from a new from an old uh it's called an ERP, an Enterprise Resource Planning or Management Software, to a new one. Uh, and I helped uh, execute a $1.25 million purchase, uh, software purchase, uh, which in turn created millions of dollars worth of value um, for the company. And the other one was take, you know, redesigning, completely doing a redesign of one of their Caravan Parks website. So uh, absolutely loved the, the internship opportunity because it was a chance to again work with a, a much smaller company of course get to to learn business in a global environment and perspective uh, and then more on the studying side I mean I think London was exactly the the, the best place to be um, for someone who is interested in, in the world of business uh, being one of the largest markets in the world but um, you know truthfully you know and, and quite candidly like it wasn't always rosy um, it was actually like hills and valleys had some really awesome times there. And then there were some kind of like gloomy times there. Uh, But I I say that not to discourage you, but to, to, um, to tell you that that's normal, like that's life, you know, and it is, I will tell you, there was perhaps no better a place to learn that lesson and to learn how to navigate through sort of challenging times than in an international context because it challenged the hell out of you uh, or out of me. And so, um, yeah, yeah, I, I highly encourage it. Thanks so much, AJ. We appreciate that. Um, a couple odds and ends before uh, we get to asking questions to our panelists. Um, I want to touch on the application process. So the application process for and for any of these programs is like the study abroad application process, and then there's something extra you need to do in, in to get matched to an internship. So we have three application cycles in study abroad a year. Um, they are uh, February 1st for fall and academic year programs, um, as well as summer programs. Uh, we have uh, we have. May 1st um, is the application deadline for winter, winter, spring, and December programs. And we have uh, November 1st, which is the application deadline for spring break and spring programs. Um, Our virtual international internships, we've been able to extend deadlines a little bit later, a little bit closer to the time um, that the programs begin. Um, We're playing with those dates a little bit, but they're gonna be around those schedules and, and maybe just a little bit more wiggle room. Um, so that's to get into the into the program and then, and then as 
once you're accepted into the program, um, you'll need to provide information um, to start the internship matching process. So it's not exactly the same in all programs, but you'll certainly need to do a resume. Um, you'll certainly need to have some interviews. Some of those interviews um, are kind of more, almost as much like on a coaching basis, and some of them are more um, like whether or not you would be matched to a particular organization or company. Um, that uh, you do have help matching that company. So it's not like when you apply, you are absolutely guaranteed to get an internship. Um, you, you will hopefully, um, but, but there is this matching process. And the other thing I think is really important to say is, is um, to have an open mind about what exactly you're you're going to do in your internship and, and where where you need and can gain experience. Um, there are a lot of possibilities in terms of professional fields and academic fields um, that we have um, companies to match to, um, but we have seen um, students be more successful when they just kind of have an, a more open mind about that. So for example, um, I have uh, we had a film student who um, was we didn't have like an actual like film company to place them with, but they were absolutely they were able to do more of a marketing internship where part of their responsibilities had to do with um, making videos and editing videos and that stuff, and they were able to gain skills in that way. Um, a lot of other examples uh, like that. In terms of the the cost of this, so like study abroad programs, the cost of an internship study abroad programs is tuition plus a program fee, and then additional expenses like so whether your flight is included or not, whether your meals are included or not if you're traveling. Um, for the virtual international internships, um, it is a four credit course, which is uh, the idea is that that is one of the full time courses that you'll you'll be taking um, at DePaul. The program fee is eight hundred dollars. We have been able so far to offer scholarships for that eight hundred dollars for students who meet a certain need level. We'll do that for as as long as as we're able to. Um, for traveling in person, traveling programs, in person internship programs internationally, um, the program fees vary just like they do in regular study abroad programs, depending on the location, the, how expensive it is there, and then what's included. Is your housing included or not? Um, um, what type of housing, how much does that cost, et cetera. And uh, study abroad programs that include an internship or focus on an internship uh, have this, the same scholarships available uh, to regular study abroad programs. Um, which are primarily need-based, but they also have an academic component. Um, and we offer about a half a million dollars in scholarships for those as well. And then lastly, just connect to a study abroad advisor. As you're thinking about through this and you know how this would work for you, um, I'm not sure if you've attended other sessions this week or not, but I um, want to be real clear. You know, we, we have a, a lot of staff that really know these programs that really want students to succeed. Um, we have a study abroad 101 every single day. You'll see on our four students page that um, we have advisors. If you're not quite sure where you are, you want to look at a couple of sets of programs. We've got advisors by region um, and by college, and we have uh, each program itself has a particular contact in the study abroad office that once you get connected will be your contact from the time you're thinking of applying until you finish applying, you get accepted, you go, you return, um, and, and from there on. So lastly, how can I find study abroad programs that also offer internship programs? Um, there is a, a hyperlink in here that I'm going to show you what this looks like on our website. So hopefully most of you have been to the study abroad website <clears throat> already at studyabroad.depaul.edu. Um, this is a screenshot of it and I circled here on the left search for programs. Once you click that, you'll see a couple of program types. <clears throat> if you scroll down, um, this image on the left is internship programs with this image, earn academic credit, build career tools, enrich your resume, all in international work settings. When you click on this view programs, this other screen, this other screenshot that this will pull up and this is a list of all of the programs that offer an internship either required or as an option um, that, for which we're accepting applications right now or I should say for which we are you know promoting these programs right now the application cycle each cycle usually opens about six months before the the program begins um, from here you click on any one of these programs and you'll get all kinds of information on academics on cost on housing and how the internship works what fields are available etc cetera, etc cetera. 